life is the connections you make with people. There's a young man in Omaha I met. He was there with his team. Uh, his name was Jeffrey Simmons. You may recall many years ago being here, a lot of concern about Jeffrey's entry. Jeffrey was a remarkable story, remarkable to meet that young man. I just said to Jeffrey how much I respected how once he entered in, with the noise, he led his life as a person and still is as a person. And Dan brought him in, coached him for two years, and then had to play against him a third year. And, and Jeffrey's one of those instances, one of those many where we do things right, some tough things, but some right things in college athletics. So with that, Dan Mullen, the head coach at the University of Florida. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. It's great to be up here. Great to see all of you again. Um, I know he just asked me about that. Jeffrey's an, an extraordinary, extraordinary young man. And one of the reasons why you coach is that is to make a positive impact on people's lives. Uh, hopefully I was able to make a positive impact on, on a Jeffrey Simmons life. And uh, I can guarantee you he'll make a positive impact on a lot of people's lives for a year to come. So uh, that's one of the reasons we coach. I know uh, we don't always, people don't see it that way or that part of it uh, as the limelight. But one of the reasons, the biggest reason really, a coach is to make a positive impact on young men's lives. I want to say it's great to be up here. It's really exciting uh, to be back, to see everybody here. Uh, and the excitement of, of media days, the excitement of the season coming up, being, being live in person again, not having to look at everybody just through computer screens and, uh, and, and to do that. I'm, I'm really excited to be here, excited to get this season kicked off. Uh, we open up at home. Uh, there it is against Florida Atlantic. Um, FAU is going to be, uh, you know, Saturday night in the swamp. Uh, can't wait. I know the, the excitement, the energy. Uh, last year um, it was a hard year for everybody. But now as you start to see these different sporting events, uh, you look at uh, things that are going on with the, uh, you know, with, with, with the Lightning winning the, the Stanley Cup and the energy in the stadium. And you realize how much you miss that. Even getting to watch the College World Series in, in Omaha, you know, seeing, seeing basically the entire state of Mississippi move to Omaha uh, to cheer on Mississippi State and have them uh, win that national championship uh, for the Southeastern Conference and, and for Mississippi State and the people of Mississippi uh, winning that national championship was amazing. And, but that energy in the stadium, uh, those are things that, that we really missed. And I can't wait uh, for that opening night in the swamp to and feel that energy and excitement of, uh, of our fans and everybody coming out to see us, see us come play again. Um, a lot of exciting things going on for us right now after, after coming off a, a great year, obviously uh, a little bit of challenge offensively will be different this year. Uh, two first rounders last year uh, on the, the offensive side of the ball and a second rounder, a quarterback, uh, guys leaving on to the NFL. It's great to see those guys have that success and go on to the next stage. And, uh, but there's a lot of production to go fill offensively uh, that we're, we're really excited about on the offensive side of the ball. The, uh, you know, we have, we have a couple quarterbacks that have experience. I know Emory Jones coming back and Anthony Richardson competing for that job with them. Uh, but if you look at those guys and what they've been able to do uh, with the experience they have, if you go, you know, if you get into statistics and go look at, look at Emory Jones' statistics, uh, he's a guy that's played a bunch of football. Uh, he's not coming in as a guy that's never played in, uh, before. So really excited about that. You know, uh, we, we lost a lot of production at the receiver and tight end position, but we still have a lot coming back. We rotate those guys a lot. We've done a, tried to do a, a great job of creating depth at those positions. I think uh, media days last year, the number one question I would have got is, hey, you just lost four receivers to the NFL draft. How are you going to be able to come back in production in the passing game? And uh, we we're able to come back because of how we play in our, within our system of, of playing a lot of different guys. They've had experience. So uh, the next guys are going to have their opportunity to get the ball in their hands uh, and make things happen. And then we also have a lot of ex uh, veteran players on the offensive line and, and especially at the running back position this year. So uh, that's going to be uh, – will be a little bit different offensively, uh, but that's part of the fun of coaching is being able to adapt, change, and build around the strengths of the players that we have. Uh, defensive attitude, we have a, you know, we today brought two of our defensive players with us, Zach Carter and Ventrell Miller. And, uh, you know, you look at the leadership those guys bring on defense uh, that we have. We have some really young players in the secondary 
with uh, but you got Trey Dean and Kyir Elam with some experience coming back there. But uh, really, to me, the attitude of where our defense is at is is where I'm really pleased with the energy. I, I think everybody knows we play a lot of guys defensively, roll guys through to keep them fresh and healthy. And, uh, and I'm really excited, though, uh, of the mindset, the attitude that the defense as a whole is bringing uh, to the table and the leadership that they have uh, within, within our program. Uh, a lot of big things for this year. You know, I mean, we, we've been to three straight New Year's Six Bowl games. Uh, hopefully we can uh, get that one step further into uh, a New Year's Six playoff game this year. Uh, love the opportunity to get back to Atlanta to compete for another SEC championship again this year like we did last year. Uh, it was really exciting. Uh, we're, we have progress coming along on the, uh, on the Hevner football complex, uh, which is going to be the, really the premier facility in all of college football and I uh, hope this time next year we'll be in a, in a brand new facility uh, with a lot of exciting things happening and, and on campus a lot of exciting things happening we we have I think starting Friday with the opening ceremony we'll have uh, we'll have 30 Gators um, in the Olympics uh, starting this Friday so it's uh, it's an exciting time but it, it's the, the biggest excitement, obviously, is being here, seeing all of you in person again, and the excitement of knowing that, uh, you know, here in, what, about six weeks away, that we're going to be, you know, back in and, and playing college football in, in front of the, uh, the Gator Nation out there in the swamp, and, and really excited to, to kick this year off and get that going. Thank you, Coach Mullen, for your opening comments. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Savannah, Riley, and AJ will bring a microphone to you. So we'll go ahead and start over here on my left on the second row. Hello, Dan. David Kloniger with the Charleston Post and Courier. What percentage of your team has been vaccinated for COVID? Uh, I'm not going to get into the, the specific numbers right now. I don't. I, the, uh, but I think we're doing very well with that, with those numbers. I, I think, you know, when you look at COVID and what we dealt with last year, I think our, our medical staff, uh, Paul Silvestri, our training staff, has done a phenomenal job of educating our players. Um, obviously, in the state of Florida, our governor has done an amazing job with the accessibility of the vaccine. Um, for quite a while now. Uh, and then, you know, we have the, the UF Shands hospital system throughout the entire pandemic's done an amazing job of, of what we've done. So uh, I, we are at a pretty high number uh, of vaccinated players right now. Uh, but I think that the medical staff and, and really, uh, you know, look at, at Governor DeSantis, what he's been able to do and, and the UF leadership of UF Shands hospital system uh, on campus uh, has really been beneficial for our program uh, and, and the university as a whole, and, and uh, you know, we're we're getting close to a, a very high what the threshold numbers that you need to be at. Okay, we'll stay right down here in front, Tom. Hey, Dan, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Given your quarterback sc scenario that you mentioned a moment ago, do you feel like you maybe go back to your you know bread and butter roots? Is there a tweak to your system that you think these guys will will offer? Yeah, like, you know, I guess after, I think as, as Greg Mass, 13 years here, I don't, I don't know which my bread and butter is because we've, we've been all over the place with, with every different style of quarterback from, you know, if you go back to even being a coordinator, uh, you know, you go back to, to the Alex Smiths and the, the Chris Leaks, uh, through the Tebows, you know, to, to Tyler Russell and Dak Prescott and Chris, I mean, there's been so many different variations. I think the key to it is, uh, and one of the reasons we've been successful is never trying to take a, a square peg and put it into a round hole is let's identify what our guys do really well and build around the strengths of not just the quarterback, but the offense as a whole. And we'll, we will go to do that this year and build around the strengths of our quarterbacks. Okay, we'll stay on the center section along the left-hand aisle. Uh, Coach Mullen, Drew DeArmond, uh, ESPN 97.7 The Zone Radio in Huntsville, Alabama. I wanted to ask about a local kid from my community, Jaden Hill, the process he's made in your, your, in your defense. I know the secondary is a big key for you guys to bounce back this year. And also, we know after the Missouri game last year, you're obviously a Star Wars fan. Uh, what is your favorite movie of the genre? Cool. All right. Well, the Jaden Hill is much easier than the Star Wars question, because, right? I mean, you, you can go so many different directions with the Star Wars question. But um, the uh, Jaden Hill uh, has done an amazing job. You know, you're looking at a young guy got got was injured uh, in, in high school, came in, played for us, uh, got over that injury, has continued to work, has had a great mindset, a great attitude. Obviously, really, uh, you know, great family, high character. 
uh, excellent student uh, in the classroom, studies the game. And, you know, you look, I think he, he's going now into his third season with us. That first year, you're kind of learning, figuring it out. Uh, second year, you get the opportunity and take a, take a growth to learn where you are. And we really, you know, I, I expect him to, to jump into, um, you know, being a, being a starter, being an every down player for us this season. And, uh, you know, so I, you really excited to see that, that growth throughout Guy's career. And you talk about development, you know, and you look at the growth throughout their career. I think get, people get all excited. Hey, I want to see this guy play right away. I'm more excited to see, are we seeing a consistent growth throughout your career? And uh, Jaden's a guy that's done that. All right, we'll go over here to the right along the aisle. Hey, Dan, Jordan Hill with Opelike Auburn News. I want to ask about Mahmoud Diabate. Just what have you seen from him this offseason and, and what uh, you feel like he can do with the defense this year? Well, I think, you know, Mahmoud's a, a really um, great athlete and, you know, dynamic player with, with speed and burst coming off the edge. Uh, I think he's a guy, because of that, you've seen us. He, I love creating matchup issues. I think if you watch us offensively last year uh, with guys, we, we, do, we try to do a great job and, and you know, spend a lot of time with Todd uh, and the defensive staff, making sure we're creating positive matchups. Well, Mahmoud's a guy that creates matchup issues for guys. And I think now when you see him as he's growing, uh, into being a, a linebacker and you see him really growing into the instincts of being an every down player now is where the matchups really become a problem because now I can be an every down player at backer but now I can come off the edge I can carry people in coverage I understand the defense as a whole and now I get to use my athleticism to become a dynamic playmaker coach we'll go back over to our left second row uh, John Adams knoxnews.com Dan, do you think it's harder to win a championship now than when you guys did it at Florida when you were an offensive coordinator in 06 and 08? Uh, I don't know. There's more teams in the league, so I guess statistically speaking, it would make it harder. Um, I think the league right now is – that was at the beginning – of where the league is today. So I think top to bottom, the league is probably even at a higher level now uh, than, it, than it was then on top to bottom uh, teams. So I think that part of it makes it a little bit harder. I think, that, you know, there, there were some unbelievable high-end teams back then. I mean, I remember going in, in 08, the uh, SEC championship game was number one against, I think, I think we were number two at Florida. I know Alabama was one. We were, I think we were two, two or three. Uh, you know, so when, when you're looking there, you know, that the high end was still there of, of teams that are going to compete for the national championship. But I think the depth has certainly grown in the league and made it, made it more difficult uh, on a week to week basis. Okay, we'll stay on the left side all the way on the wall. Mike. Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Coach, after the bowl game last year and, and the opt outs that you guys had, you said, hey, something's going to need to change with the postseason. Just wondering your feelings on the 12, the proposed 12 team playoff, and are, are you for that? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you have to look at it. I mean, honestly, I, I could pull up my Jurgen Klopp and say, hey, I'm a, that's a com question for Commissioner Sankey. I'm just here to coach football. Uh, but the. Uh, you know, I, I think I think change. I think when the playoffs started, uh, if you would have asked me when the, the you created the four team playoff, I know, I'm sure someone did. If you ever look back in the files, I said it's going to change a lot of things about college football. Not immediately, but over the long haul, it will change a lot of things about college football. Um, and I think it will. And I, I think eventually you will. We will end up getting to an expansion. Uh, I would imagine that would come uh, sometime in the future, uh, but. Um, you know, I, I think we're still learning. You know, it's interesting to see. We, last year we had a lot, several opt-outs during the bowl game. Now, last year was also a very, very difficult year as a whole, um, mentally and emotionally uh, for players. And the, the previous two years, we didn't have any opt-outs for bowl games. So uh, when you look at it, I don't know if that was a one-off or, or how it's going to change in the long-term picture of how that'll change things. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see. I, I, I think college football will continue to evolve. And once the playoff system started, I think that just was the first step of the, the college football old bowl system that you knew and, and the college football we knew changing into the future. Coach, we'll go right down front to Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, hey, Dan, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat, is that I just wonder what your thoughts were on the name, image, and likeness now, how, 
how things are going for you guys with Florida? It, it's, it's, you know, it's a learning curve. Uh, obviously, you know, you just you're looking at, at the state law that we have in Florida and, and uh, anytime you're ad adapting to a, a new law within the state and a law that directly affects our football program, uh, there's a big learning curve. And uh, I'm excited. I'm really excited about it, excited for the opportunities it presents our players. Uh, I think it, it's great for the players, uh, but I think there is a big learning curve. We had a meeting on it this morning with the, a team meeting on it this morning uh, of continuing to educate uh, ourselves, educate each other, continue to grow and learn within the law. How do we, what's the, the, the best way to help the players operating within the law and doing things the right way. And uh, so um, I, I think we're going to be on a learning curve here for, for a little bit of time, you know, as, as we get into it, I have to get a, a, you know, special name, image and likeness lawyers interpreting the state law to make sure that we get it set the right way. Okay, we'll stay over on the left section in the middle. Yeah, Edgar Thompson, the Orlando Sentinel. Dan, Dan, what caught your eye initially about Emory Jones, like going back years ago? Where has he grown the most in all this time you've known him, and what are your expectations of him? Uh, well, I think if you know me with quarterbacks, I have very, very high expectations of my quarterbacks. So uh, my expectations are extremely high. I think, uh, you know, when it goes back to recruiting, when I got hired at Florida, uh, I said I had a, a a message that Emory sent me, and you know I just sent him a text. He was committed to another school at the time. I sent a text, and he says, "Coach, I think when this shakes out, I'll be ready. I want to be your quarterback, and not I want to look at Florida. I want to consider this, or I'm, I'm thinking about flipping schools. It was I want to be your quarterback, and so I think that part of when you look at at who guys are uh, is so critical." And, and, and who they've become. And then if you look at his progression, I mean, he came in as a very celebrated high school player, highly ranked player. Uh, and I think for, for a couple of years now, he's learned, he's grown, he's developed. He's a completely different player he was when he walked in and his understanding of the game and, and, you know, and his maturity. And I have a lot of respect for guys. I think if you watch and you look at a lot of guys that have had success throughout the years, uh, he had the opportunity to look at a Kyle Trask who went from a, a pretty much an unrecruited player that he came in and worked, prepared, bought his time, you know, learned how to do it the right way, all of a sudden was a Heisman Trophy finalist and then now is an NFL player and, you know, a second round draft pick in the NFL. And I think when, when you look at that, you look at a Dak Prescott who didn't play for his first several years uh, on campus, uh, you know, and now is highest paid one of the high athletes in the country this year. Uh, you know, I think Emory has showed the maturity early on that it wasn't I have to play day one. It was I need to continue to be developed from day one to be prepared for my moment and my time. And that's really what he's been able to do. And that, as I said, you know, you're looking at a guy that's going to, you know, as he comes into the season, he's not coming in with a stat line of nothing. Uh, he's coming in with a stat line that he's played uh, – in, at, at key times in significant games. And, uh, you know, I think, I think that's huge, and, it, and it's prepared him for this time. Okay, we'll go to the center section alongside the right aisle. Connor O'Gara, Saturday Down South. Dan, what's the biggest reason that your defense never figured it out last year? Um, I don't know about that, because I think if you look in different games, we're a very maybe erratic defensively at different times. Um, but, I, but there's a lot of different things that go into that. You know, there's some games we played really, really well um, defensively. Uh, there's some games where I thought we played well, uh, but statistically maybe weren't great. And if you look in a lot of those games, of if you were going to play us on the other side of the ball, you had to play a different style game maybe than you wanted to or expected to and take a lot of chances because we were going to score points and you had to try to keep up with us. Or we jumped out to a big lead and you were just kind of, uh, you know, just, just, you know, throw caution to the wind to try to put up yards and points uh, as fast as possible. Um, you know, and there's other game, you know, one or two early in the year, I certainly think the, the learning curve of missing a spring practice and the time off and the speed of the game of going to tackle live uh, for the players and the time off of not being able to do that, uh, I think that showed early in the season and that improved as the year went on. So I, I don't know there's one thing or to say that it was uh, – 
statistically was not where we want to be. Uh, but when I look and I go through game by game situations, I think it's easy to identify in this game, here were our issues, and it wasn't one specific thing. Okay, we'll go all the way to the back left. Cecil? Hi. Um, hey. hey, Coach. Cecil Hurt from the Tuscaloosa News. Um, Alabama will be visiting Gainesville for the first time given the quirks of the SEC schedule, uh, first time in 10 years. And uh, just talk about the opportunity to play that game in sort of a non-neutral setting and, and have the home crowd for that game. Yeah, I think that's – it's really exciting. Um, you know, I don't get the commissioner in trouble here, but, you know, I mean, I'd love to, to maybe do away with the permanent crossover team and, and so you get these type of games more often, I think, for the players, uh, for the fan bases. I really think it's exciting to see some more of, of the uh, of, of maybe uh, you know mixing up the teams from from the West and, and playing two different teams uh, each year instead of a permanent crossover. I think that'd be really exciting because so you get this matchup. So uh, it's going to be an exciting day. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a fun game to be a part of. And uh, as you said, you know, for for ten years we haven't seen it. You'd love to to see, see that more. I mean, well, there's teams that'll visit, there, there's non-conference teams that are gonna visit the Swamp a lot more than conference teams. And uh, I think you'd, you would love to see maybe a, a better rotation of those teams. Okay, we'll go to front left, Tom. Yeah, Tom Murphy again, ADG. I also had a schedule question for you. Uh, your take on this, it's interesting. Um, you got a front-loaded kind of home schedule, and then after October 9th, you don't play another conference home game. So I just want to get your take on how that might shake out. Yeah, it's um, – well, yeah, because our conference home game's in Jacksonville this year. And when you play a neutral site game, it kind of uh, – it kind of throws that off your, your home and away schedule, you know. So um, that I, we, we have one already set, I think, you know. I mean, I don't know how you'd ever do it, but if the league ever wanted to go to nine-game schedule, which I don't think we're, we're anybody's jumping up, and board, uh, jumping up and down about right now, but I guess one way you do it is play four home, four away in a neutral site game, and you can find some different ways or matchups that everybody got to do that. And uh, – that would be one interesting way to do it, and then you have the same number of home and away games would help. But, you know, our one game in that stretch that would be that would, would be the, uh, the George game, and that's going to be in Jacksonville. Hey, Coach, we'll go over here to our right in the middle. Coach Stefan Krajnik with the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal. You, you mentioned Jeffrey Simmons a little bit earlier. Just, you know, your overall tenure there at Mississippi State, I mean, how much do, do examples like him still stick out as, as something you try to incorporate with what you're doing at Florida? Well, a ton. I mean, I, I think it's, it's your it, when you look at players and you look at guys that have become successful, as I touched on earlier, you know, and uh, the most rewarding thing about being a coach is seeing a young person become successful um, and accomplishing goals and living out their dreams. There, there's there is no to me, there's no more rewarding thing as a coach uh, than that. Uh, you know, we've won championships, uh, you know, won a lot of games. Uh, lost some games, but really the thing that sticks with you and rewarding is, is helping a young person accomplish their goals and their dreams in life. And so those are the ones that stick with you. And, you know, I, with, I had a lot of uh, great players that played for me throughout the years, a lot of guys at Mississippi State that played for me. And, you know, when you see the success stories they have, and, and I'm not talking about, obviously, you know, Jeffrey and his personal life, Jeffrey and his football life, extremely successful. Um, but you can go all the way. It's, it's beyond football. It's guys off the field and the success they have off the field and the family men they are now is one of the things that makes you the most proud of as a coach, and that's really the most rewarding thing that you get as a coach. Coach, we'll go over here on the left corner. Hey, Dan, Vince Farrar from 99.1, the sports animal in Knoxville. Wondering with Josh Heupel coming over from the state of Florida, if you can share any thoughts or insights on what you think about Josh Heupel. Um, you know, I, I don't I, – I was going through my years. I don't know that I've ever faced him, um, you know. So I know uh, uh, he's, he's been successful uh, everywhere he's been uh, throughout his career. Uh, and so I think he'll bring uh, a lot of excitement. I know offensively they're always a challenge. They're an exciting team to watch and have a great system, put up some big numbers. And uh, so it'll, it'll be a great, a great challenge to, uh, to finally get the opportunity to go against him. Coach, we'll take one final question over here on our right, along the wall. 
Hey, Dan. Uh, Tony Sakalas, BamaInsider.com. Uh, when you look at Alabama's recruiting success in the state of Florida, I think they've pulled more five stars from that state than any other school, even the Florida schools. How do you go about battling that? And are you concerned about that? And how do you go about changing the tide of that? Well, I think, you know, a couple of things. I think they've done, they've built the program. Nick's been there a long time and done a really uh, a good job of building a consistent uh, program and consistency within his program. Uh, you know, I, I guess the, the, the short answer to that is, I mean, there's, I don't, nobody asked my opinion on ratings. So uh, I judge, maybe I rate everybody a little bit differently on who we go after and who we want uh, that way, um, you know, and the, uh, so, but for us, I think our, you know, with the facilities that we're getting caught up with, when you look at the University of Florida now, and you look at the only school in America um, that is a top 10 public university academically, uh, and really considered a, a, a top 10 football program consistently over the last three years, uh, you're looking at that change. You look at the facilities that we have academically, the opportunity to play in the, the swamp, the opportunity now with name, image, and likeness, and what that means to kids in Florida and how they'll be able to brand themselves within their hometowns of Florida. Uh, then you look at the Hefner football complex coming up now to catch us up facility-wise um, with other teams in America. Uh, that's really, I think, how it's going to change where, you know, if, if you look at it, that that's a school of saying, hey, I, I don't know if there's a better place you can go in America uh, than Florida if you want the complete package, uh, if you want every aspect of it with alumni connections, with the education, uh, with the opportunity to play for championships and the facilities. Uh, I don't know if there's a better place than Florida. Coach Mullen, thank you for your time. Thank you. Good to see y'all again.